right. Good morning. I'm Kate Murray, running for Nassau County District Attorney. The senseless murder of New York City Police Officer Randolph Holder is a terrible, terrible tragedy. Officer Holder was committed to doing the right thing by his community, serving and protecting the residents of New York City. Officer Holder was allegedly murdered by Tyrone Howard, a man who had dedicated his life to doing the wrong thing. It begs the question, why was a man who had been arrested 28 times since the age of 13 on charges that included assault, robbery, criminal trespassing, narcotics possession and dealing, sentenced to a diversion program rather than put behind bars? But while this case falls under the jurisdiction of New York City, this practice of placing dangerous criminals in diversion programs is all too common in Nassau County. Many drug dealers are getting off easy in Nassau, and after being arrested, the dealers claim that they are addicts and better suited for the diversion program than jail time. Thus, they end up back on the street rather than behind bars. Tyrone Howard played the system in New York City this way as well. And after months of being diverted, he gunned down Officer Holder. Don't just take my word for it. NYPD Police Commissioner William Bratton said that Howard was the poster boy for not being diverted. Mayor de Blasio, amazingly enough, even added that someone like this shouldn't have been on the streets. Well, my opponent, Madeline Singas, claims that nothing can be done by the district attorney's office to stop these scams by criminals who should be locked up. This could not be further from the truth. Under state law, a prosecutor can call for a hearing to determine whether or not a particular defendant truly belongs in the diversion program. During this hearing, the prosecution can consider oral and written arguments uh, hear testimony from witnesses and consider relevant e evidence. And under the current administration, the district attorneys, prosecutors on the other hand, have remained silent and abrogated their privilege to express an opinion as to whether a particular criminal defendant is eligible and appropriate for the diversion program. The well, local news outlets have reported that despite prosecutors pushing for Tyrone Howard to be sentenced to six years in jail, the judge who recommended diversion was apparently not presented with all of the evidence about Howard's violent past. We need to do a much better job of presenting the evidence in cases like these. We need to ensure that dangerous criminals who pose a threat to our community are being put in jail, not in diversion <coughs> programs. The diversion program is strictly for nonviolent addicts who get so that they can get the help that they need. Uh, with that being said, I would like to uh, uh, invite James Carver, president of the Nassau County PBA, to share a few thoughts. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. James Carver, president of the Nassau County PBA. Um, as Kate just mentioned, uh, you know, just last week we had a New York City police officer that was uh, shot and killed by somebody that was uh, in the diversion program. We've talked about uh, all the time here on Long Island we have an increasing heroin problem. I talk to my detectives and police officers, and one of the things they mention is that you can have up to 90 bags of heroin on your possession, which obviously to, uh, uh, to someone, just a, any common folk would think that he would be dealing, he or she would be dealing that drug. But under, under the, the law, the way it's presently uh, um, laid out, that person can be eligible for a, di a diversion. Now, if you're carrying 90 bags of heroin with you, it's obvious you're not be using that. It's the intent to sell that. And that, that person should never be allowed to, uh, to enter the program. So uh, one of the reasons why we endorsed uh, Ms. Murray for a district attorney is because of her vision about what to do going forward. And I think going forward, if, you, if it's not working down here, if the judges aren't complying or if the ADAs are not complying, I have full, full faith that Ms. Murray will make sure that they will comply and aggressively uh, uh, seek out those cases that shouldn't be eligible for a diversion and, and then appeal that judge's decision. On top of that, it, if it doesn't work, we have to go to Albany. And I know uh, from her past experience, she is not shy about going up to Albany or, or, or advocating for a change in the law. Just a few years ago, you had changes to Rockefeller drug laws that were around for a long time that people thought were inappropriate. Well, I don't think there's a, a better situation right now where something's inappropriate than than having people released on diversion uh, programs that go out and kill police officers. So now's the time to, uh, to step up and, and be aggressive about this. Uh, we've seen the, the deaths uh, double in the last year. I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but they've been available and we can get them available to you. Deaths double uh, you know, from heroin uh, overdoses over the past year. And that actually coincides with the time where Narcan was uh, uh, introduced to this police department for our members to use 
um, you know, to save lives out there. So imagine if we didn't have Narcan, how many deaths there would be. So again, I think uh, diversion, uh, this program needs to be aggressively uh, uh, researched and, and, and redone in a way where we are protecting our, our, our children out there and all our loved ones, whether, you know, we, we've seen this, whether you're 18 years old, 15 years old, or 55 years old, we have seen people become victims of, of, of heroin. And again, I think, the, I think Ms. Murray's vision, Kate's vision on this is, is spot on, and we need somebody who can be aggressive to make sure that uh, another death does not happen. And we're very proud to, to have endorsed her along with a lot of other police unions. So that's all I got right now. All right, thanks, Jim Carver. And, and as you said, there, down the road, there may be a legislative fix uh, to tighten up uh, the regulations as to who might be able to uh, be put in to the diversion program. But right now, today, Madeline Singus can change her policy of making her prosecutors go, go silent. They could be in court today arguing against a particular criminal defendant uh, and the diversion of that defendant into uh, that alternative program. But the bottom line is she has finally acknowledged uh, that her prosecutors do not weigh in, they do not offer an opinion, as, and as we know, the district attorney's office, uh, when they uh, weigh in on whatever the issue is, the court is going to take notice. Does that mean that they're going to agree every single time? No. But the bottom line is she is absolutely abdicating that privilege on behalf of the residents of Nassau County to offer an opinion. Uh, with her silence, we'll never know whether her opinion, her prosecutor's opinion, would carry the day. Our dedicated Nassau County police officers work day and night to get drug dealers off the streets and behind bars. And as district attorney, I'll keep them there. I'm working in partnership with the police, with community groups, and with our residents, we will win the war on heroin. Thank you.